Hi everyone and welcome to the Lug Nudges today and continue my review series and reviewing our curriculum that we've used this year and today I am talking about Saxon Math 1. Now in the package you get the teacher's guide, you also get two packs of your worksheets, you get a meeting book, you get um, fact cards which you can then rip up, well not rip up literally, but <laughs> take, put they're perforated so then you can put them into your little fact card zip bag if you're anything like me <laughs> and that's everything. Okay so as I said you do get two but obviously we have used an awful lot of it so I've only got one to show you. So what do I think about, about Saxon? Okay pros, it is very straightforward to teach it's very thorough. It's actually an incremental approach, which is a mix between spiral and mastery. So what you will find is that you're not doing the same thing all the time, but you will also find that um, it's, it's a mix of skills, but then they will bring uh, elements back that you previously learned. So in that respect of the spiral, but also it is mastery, part mastery, because you are uh, continually um, reviewing certain topics through the meeting and other means, but it is incremental, so it's a mix of spiral and mastery. I really like that. I don't particularly like something that is completely mastery, um, so I do like that this is a mix of the two. Now we did the K-level in kindergarten, and I know a lot of people think, well not necessarily, I don't know, I'm assuming, that it's, you could do one in kindergarten. And yes, you absolutely could. However, I am thrilled that I decided not to. The reason why is because in the difference between K and, and 1 is these. So you have uh, worksheets to do. There's two sides, A and B. And you also have your fact card review to do. Now, my daughter was not a huge fan of actually writing. She loves telling stories and me writing them for her, but she was not a huge fan of actually writing in kindergarten. Um, she's still between that now. She will write, she'll, she'll do her worksheets and everything else, but she still, it's not her favourite thing to do, the actual handwriting element of it. So the fact that in the K version they didn't have that, amazing, and it was a great way to introduce, obviously we've done math in preschool, but it was a great way to introduce, oh you're in kindergarten now, we're doing our maths, and it will be manipulative based. So I do not regret at all my decision to do the K programme because of the, you know, the fact that she thoroughly enjoyed playing with all the manipulatives, getting a real excitement for doing maths. With maths one we have got the worksheets but she's still there is quite a lot still of interaction with the manipulatives and I did buy the manipulative kit it's such a hard word to say I did buy the manipulative kit um, and we have used it a ton not just in our lessons but also for fun um, my daughter really likes the geo boards so we'll just get the geo boards out and play shapes um, she really likes the scales that came with it and we did have scales already but um, she really did like getting the scales out the different um, blocks that came with it so I would say that I would say we have definitely used that a ton so I would recommend getting it but obviously it depends on your budget and everything else because it was reasonably pricey not huge it wasn't hugely expensive not like some math curriculums but you know it was a little bit pricey but you could obviously source the the parts separately however I did actually try to do that and it worked out more expensive so that's why I decided to buy the kit now um the pros as I said it's very thorough I like that it's a mixture of mastery and spiral so it's incremental I really like that um I also really like the fact that it's guiding me to how with how to teach math but you don't have to follow exactly what it says in the book and we and I don't if you you know you could if you wanted to read there read the actual script to them we don't do that um there's nothing wrong with that you know if you do that I'm just saying I don't particularly do that I just read through the lessons when we when I'm getting all her worksheets ready her work box for the week and um I'll get an idea of what you know what the lesson is once I've got my supplies out and everything else and then we'll just start a lesson so at the top it tells you exactly, um, I've just opened a random lesson, it tells you exactly what you need to do to prepare for the lesson. So for this one you needed, oh this is an assessment week, so you needed the assessment um, and it tells you the sheet number, your meeting book, your fact cards, your fact sheet, this is your number pattern that you can write on your meeting strip, I don't do that, we write it on the whiteboard um, and then it'll tell you your coins to put into your coin cup. Now if you're in the UK or any other country that doesn't use dollars and you're thinking, ah I can't do Saxon, you can <laughs> do what I do. 
make your own <laughs> coins. So basically, I just have my little coin box, and in here, um, we have UK money. So where it says put six dimes and one penny in a coin cup, I'll just put my UK equivalent into my coin cup. See, you can completely do Saxon not being American. It's absolutely fine. Just use your own currency, and that's what I've done. So the meeting, it'll do calendar, it will do weather, counting, number pattern, clock, and coin cup. Now, for each week, it varies as to what activities you do. So for example, at the beginning of the year, it was counting one to 100, but slowly as you got towards the end of the year, now it's counting 100 to 1,000, counting in 100s. Um, for, at the beginning of the year, it was just counting by tens forwards. Then as we got further along, it was counting by tens forwards and backwards. Then we introduced fives and twos. You had covered those in the K too. I don't think you covered twos in the K, but we had I had taught all that anyway. But um, so it wasn't such a oh what's this? We, we you do do that in K too. Um, so other than that, then it'll tell you uh, place value. So it'll give you the number of the day, and then you'll discuss how many tens and how many ones are in that number. You'll do your clock left and right, and as I said, your coin cup. Then you'll start your lesson. I'm actually just going to switch to a different lesson because that is a lesson for the assessment so that's slightly different and I'll tell you that in a second um, right okay so in this lesson um, you're writing your number 52 so that's your tens and your you on so your place value then in this lesson you're adding two to an even number so it'll tell you exactly how to present the lesson so you're going to write the following on the chalkboard and then you are going to use cubes if you need to so you did not say manipulative to come in um, or an abacus you know if you, if you need to present it to them in a, a manner with the manipulatives that they can understand um, or you can obviously just write it on the board however you want to do it you know your child best and then it continues on reading the problems there's a master sheet which you'll find in here and you'll complete the exercise using the master sheet and then you will do your fact sheet so with your fact sheet it is these um, my daughter is not a huge fan of these i must say we do our fat cards because you're supposed to do your fat cards first then do these and it's supposed to be well i don't necessarily say it's supposed to be boys you're supposed to present it to them and then see how quickly they can do it we never time they don't suggest timing but i don't do it that way um sometimes we'll just do the fat cards sometimes we'll do this sometimes she'll do all of it sometimes i'll select a section of it for them to do and if she does them all fine then we don't do the whole thing um it, we vary sometimes we use do a dot markers to make it more fun stickers you know all those kind of things but i will admit she's not a huge fan of that then you do your worksheet now it'll tell you exactly what worksheets to do there are two sides to it so there's an a side and a b side the way saxon is made it was supposed to be using well not i keep saying supposed to but I don't know. It is used in schools a lot. So they use B as a homework. Obviously, we're home, we homeschool, so we don't tend to really do that. I mean, we do homework, I suppose, in the way we do our reading at night time, but I don't really class that as homework. But there are two sides, A and B. It gives you a little small version in your student, um, in your teacher guide that's got the answers on if you need them. But this is the sheet. So, for example... one here's a sheet so it has two sides the a side and the b side they are very similar to be fair which is why we don't do both we don't do both we do a just a the reason i only do the one side is she can do it she doesn't need to do b she if if i thought that she was struggling with any of the concepts then we would do B. But she isn't. This this is very straightforward for her. She knows exactly how to do it. Um, the only where where she needs a little bit more practice is where it's um, double digit addition or subtraction. But you know that's not something that she gets wrong. It just maybe perhaps takes her a little bit longer to work it out. Sometimes not always. It just depends. Often we use the coins because um, that's that she can really she she finds it a lot easier. She's using coins to, to do the double digit addition um so we don't do both sides however you can you could do one in the morning one in the afternoon 
Um, but because she's getting it, I don't think that I need to do that. If there is a different question on the other side that is um, something that we haven't covered in a while or something that we I think maybe she needed a little bit more practice on, I'll say, okay, now we're going to turn over and do question five on the other side. Um, but generally speaking, we only do the one side and that has been perfectly fine. Okay, anything else? I cons. Okay, it's very black and white. Um, I don't necessarily have an issue too much with that, but sometimes I think, you know, if you look at something like Singapore and how colourful and bright it is and everything else, sometimes I think, you know, is that better? I don't know. Um, it is a different system entirely, so it's not really fair to compare Singapore to Saxon. But they do have sections for this, like for, for this question where you're drawing. So she's doing her um, her number puzzle and she's actually her word number puzzle her word problem and she's actually um required to draw something which is really funny because she very very rarely ever draws what they ask her to <laughs> so for example this one is um she had eight pieces of banana so she'll she'll draw something else and completely which is fine i don't have an issue with that but it's funny uh, i always think if anyone ever looks at our worksheets they'll be thinking huh because <laughs> it'll say draw i don't know a cat and then she'll draw a pig <laughs> um she, she's independent, she likes to choose what she wants to draw and that's fine, as long as she's doing the word problem it doesn't really matter. Um, so where was I going with that point? Okay, so yes, they will, so there is drawing, there's also colouring, it'll tell you to colour certain things, different colours, so you know, you do get colour into it by the student putting it in there, but it's not automatically on the page. Having said that though, I looked at another worksheet the other day and it had, um, I don't know, some kind of animal on it and she wasn't impressed, she's was like, oh I don't want to do that, that's got a goat on it goats are not her favourite at the moment. So maybe there's an advantage to the fact that it's plain. I don't know. But anyway, <laughs> um, any other cons? Uh, we don't always do, where is this? We don't do the meeting book in terms of how it's laid out in here because we have our calendar on the wall. So basically we do, you know, we, we did a little bit of it where you do the shapes and can you even see that? I'm a bit too far away. There we go. Um, so it has calendar in it, we do our calendar on the wall, so that's one of the main reasons why we don't do this because we have a calendar on the wall and we also, she also has a calendar notebook, so it would be like doing everything triple <laughs> if we did this too. Um, but it does have a hundred chart in, which we have occasionally referred to, but again she has that in a calendar notebook. Um, you do have the counting strips, but again I write that on the whiteboard. Uh, so it is kind of redundant, but I do do the activities that it suggests for the meeting during our morning time, calendar time and everything else. So I do do the activities, I just don't do it in this book. But also I will vary them. So for example, it'll say, okay, let's find another lesson. Uh, what's this one? Lesson 58. So I won't necessarily do all of them every single day. Um, when we were first learning, I did, because obviously you need that reinforcement, that repetition, but once she knows them, it, it, you don't, I don't need to do it every single day, all the, you know, counting to 100, you know, counting in tens, uh, because I know she knows it, so I just do maybe the tw two or three times a week, the all the different counting options, or I might do one particular one a day, so I might say, okay, today we're going to count in fives, just to make sure she doesn't forget them, um, but I don't do every single thing in terms of the counting, um, tasks every day. We do do weather, we do do calendar, we do clock, we do coin cup. Um, number pattern, I don't really do that now because she knows she's very good at patterning so I don't really feel I need to do that. Um, and right and left, again she knows the right and the left. We did that a lot previously, you know, every day which is your right, which is your left to reinforce but she knows what it is now so we don't need to do that every single day but I will throw them in there occasionally. I'll do even numbers as well. Um, they have that as you get later on in the book. So let's just move on actually to a later lesson um, and see what the difference is in terms of the meeting. So for this, for the meeting in lesson 123, you are doing the counting by tens wrap, um, <laughs> which is really funny actually. That's a really good, that's a really good little wrap that they put together. Um, so which is basically using your number chart and counting by tens from any given number. But they've made it really fun, it's like a little poem. What is it? Counting by um, tens starting from nine, counting by tens, 
you are divine or something like that. Um, what's the other one? It's really fun anyway. Um, counting by 100 to 1000, counting fives, counting tens to 100, counting backwards, saying the odd numbers, saying the odd numbers backwards. Um, uh, ask your child to identify the total number of pennies needed to show this number. Um, so let's show this amount of money using dollars, dimes and pennies. Again, I'll use my little trusty UK coins. So yes, um, as, as you go along, they do add to it. They take things out and they replace other things. So keep your eye on that because you, you could be thinking, oh, it's just the same thing. It's not, it does actually change. So when it changes, we'll do the new thing every day until I know she's comfortable with it. And then we'll put that onto our two to three times a week list too. That's everything. I really enjoy Saxon. Um, as I said, sometimes I do have concerns in terms of is it attractive enough is it really appealing to her but she's she's getting it so in that respect you know we're fine do i can think we'll continue with it we have got saxon 2 um for next year so we'll be definitely doing saxon 2 um i've heard some things about saxon 3 people saying that it repeats a lot of saxon 2 so i don't know about saxon 3 um we might just go to saxon 5 4 I don't know, we'll see. Um, but I know that that's completely different. So, hmm, I don't know. But we have really enjoyed it so far. We, as I said, we are doing Saxon 2. I am trying a couple of little extra maths curriculums this year, coming second grade, adding a few in. Still doing this as our spine, but just adding a few in for other things. So for metric numbers and for coins, because obviously this is us you can completely as i said tailor it to uk but i did actually buy a curriculum that covers metric numbers uh, metric numbers metric measurement <laughs> and uk coins um so we can do some extra examples from that because the world train men mine do recommend adding something to saxon last year we added the moffat girls first grade hands-on maths curriculum which we really enjoyed would definitely recommend it but this year we are adding something different which you'll see when i do my curriculum video so it might be that we'll move on to that um but i would like to stay with saxon because i do think it's very thorough i do think she she picks up with it but it's not me that's doing the learning it's her so i have to go by her reaction and response to it so far we've been fine obviously as i said there are certain things that she's not fond of but i think you can get that with any curriculum i don't think any curriculum is going to be perfect but she's getting it, it I have no issues teaching it. It's fun. I would definitely continue with it. Um, and provided she's okay with continuing with it, then we will. But if she starts to want to do something else, then obviously I will look out for another option, maybe one of the ones that we're trying this year. But otherwise, we will continue with it for now. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Take care. See you soon.